The urgency for organisations to address diversity and inclusion has arguably never been stronger. You know, you know, the events of last year really brought that through. Um, you know, let's talk a bit about that. You know, what are some of the initiatives that, that you're focused on at the bank and how are they going and, and what results and outcomes have you seen so far? Yeah, it's a, it's a great question. And to your point, I, I, I very much also think about it as sort of two pandemics, two big moments of 2020 that HR and workforces were challenged by definitively what we saw with COVID-19, but also the movement around social justice and equality and how DNI and equity being at the forefront of these conversations was brought um, together more more than ever sort of in workplaces. And, it, and I, it was a moment for us, I think, to accelerate the transformation in many ways, as we've been previously talking about um, that the COVID-19 pandemic provided to us. And listen to your point, DNI has been something that we've been focused on at BNY Mellon for some time. And we're proud of the progress that we've been able to make. You know, 40% of our new hires are women, 45% of our new hires come from diverse backgrounds. We have one of the diverse boards on the street, 12 of our board members. Out of our 12 board members, three are women um, and four represent uh, diverse ethnicity, ethnicity backgrounds, including three black directors. Um, we've been focused around really ensuring that the work that we do around equality, um, that we kind of put our money where our mouth is so we've been really focused on from a philanthropy and from a skill building uh, perspective, thinking about how we do work in diverse communities. And so while all of that was going on as a backdrop, I still think we, like many other companies, were challenged in the moment that we saw in sort of mid 2020 about how do we support our workforce through this moment? And what we wanted to do, it goes back to, you'll see one of my one of my things, it's always about competency. Because just like I believe resiliency is a competency, I think inclusion is a competency too. I think it is a skill that leaders can be held accountable for, that they can be uh, supported to develop, um, and that they can be um, assessed for in order to think about what are those leadership qualities and profiles that are gonna help get the best out of a workforce in the future. And inclusion has to be one of those. So in the moment, we thought about how could we create connections? How could we support our managers, making sure that they had the tools and the resources that they needed to have conversations with their employees, to express that vulnerability that we've been speaking about, to sometimes say, I don't have all the answers, but I'm willing to learn, I'm willing to demonstrate a growth mindset and create a safe space for individuals on my team to have these dialogues about what different communities might be experiment, experiencing. So we went through a whole series of effort to first have some of those courageous conversations, again, modeling it at the top. So it's a little bit of a formula, right? So you think about what's the competency that you wanna build? How do you model it from a leadership perspective? How do you get the resources to your manager? And then how do you build scale tools and interventions that can then affect broader populations? And while we thought about that from the pandemic and all of the things that we did around resiliency and COVID-19, we also thought about that as, as, with inclusion. With our own CEO and our own executive team, we had those tough conversations. We were able to talk about what the different experiences were across the leadership team. We then pushed out that same model to our managers to say, you now need to go do this with your teams. Um, we gave leaders um, some tips and trainings about how to have those conversations. And now we've built scaled solutions that give our individuals uh, resources to access, things like unconscious bias trainings, things like inclusion as a leadership skill and competency, um, things like how to ensure uh, that you can sort of pursue your own learning path around being exposed to different diverse communities. So it became a real intentional effort uh, to make sure that we're supporting our organization through this moment. Uh, and we also wanted to assess where we thought we had more work to do as an organization, because like everyone else, it's never perfect. And we have things that we need to still solve for. And so we uh, set goals for ourselves to hold ourselves accountable towards making progress in the space. So we've set three-year 
aspirations for where we want the diversity of our workforce to grow and to be. Um, but we're going to ensure that we're supporting that sort of diversity of our workforce and um, representation with how are we measuring our inclusive culture and the experience of how individuals are feeling about the ability to be welcomed in our environment, no matter the background and differences that you might bring to the table. In this series, we will be speaking to a range of senior leaders who are pushing a data-driven and digital HR agenda. Make sure that you subscribe by your podcast app of choice and also via our YouTube channel for free and regular interviews with the digital HR leaders of the future.